we had a Dr. Seyfried uh, speak recently, and he, I believe, is a professor at Boston College. And he's saying that a lot of the theories on cancer are not correct, and that it's not um, a genetic disease. It's basically, uh, he, he's saying that it's fed by glutamine and glucose. He said those are the two things that are feeding cancer cells. Right. Um, and he said there's a meter you could get to check your glutamines and glucose. I might have that wrong. There's some kind of meter you could check it. But just in general, um, does this mean that we need to be careful with fruit in your mind? If he's saying that glucose feeds cancer cells, does that mean that we need to be uh, careful with fruit? Um, and Brian Clement also quotes Thomas Seyfried a lot and says that he feels that fruit feeds yeast mold, cancer, fungus, candida, and cancers, and he personally recommends minimizing it. Um, this is not the belief of most whole food plant-based eaters, but does anyone feel that uh, fruit sugar uh, is a concern? Fruit is probably the worst food anyone can eat. I'm just joking. I'm just kind of pressing on Dr. McDougal. <laughs> get, get him a little bit agitated. <laughs> You want me to answer that, Steve? I'm sorry. You want me? To, I'll answer that. All three, if you answer it. Yeah, sure. So I know Thomas C. Fried's work, and as it relates to cancer, is the um, uh, the the idea that sugar feeds cancer. It's the meta metabolic approach to cancer, and so he promotes the ketogenic diet, which I think Dr. McDougall and Dr. Claper would love the fact that I don't promote the ketogenic diet for prostate cancer. Because it turns out that, um, so the research that indicates that sugar feeds cancer applies to many sugar, uh, excuse me, many types of cancers, including glioblastomas and things. It does not apply to prostate cancer. It does not. So prostate cancer is not a glycolytic type of cancer like many others. Actually, I think you guys are going to really like this it seems like it's more lipogenic. So fats, too much fat is likely more contributory to prostate cancer that, than, uh, than, than, well, simple sugars are a problem because of the insulin response and insulin is a problem for all cancers, including prostate cancer. So let's just get that out of the way. But in terms of fruits and particularly fruits that are low glycemic that don't really cause a uh, insulin response, and, um, and they don't, the, the sugar in fruits or in low glycemic foods do not promote prostate cancer um, because it's not glycolytic. So the whole note, Thomas uh, Seafried and the um, Wahlberg effect, that's what that's about, um, does not apply to prostate cancer as it, or I think breast cancer, but that's not my specialty, as it applies likely to glioblastoma uh, of the brain and pancreatic cancer, for example, which that's not the area of expertise, but I know that the, they behave differently metabolically. So um, no, I think that um, low glycemic fruits are great. And I think that after I run five miles, six miles, eight miles, when I go for a run, my body just wants a nice squeeze, fresh, squeezed orange juice. I'm craving that because there I'm not going to get that insulin response after exercise. So A, it depends on the type of a fruit and most fruits that are low glycemic are great therapeutic. They have phytochemicals that actually have anti-cancer properties. So we want that. And B, uh, in some fruits that are a little bit more high glycemic or fruit juice, it seems to be fine as long as the person exercises quite a bit I, I typically recommend four to six hours a week of exercise with moderate to uh, with moderate intensity to high intensity. So if people do that, then um, they can do that. Um, so that's that. I'll keep it there. John, you're, you're muted. muted. You're muted. You're muted, John. You got to unmute your microphone, John. Uh, un Do his microphone. facial expression. I'm afraid I'm going to. I don't like that facial expression. I'm telling you. I'm going to have. I'm going to have nightmares. It's Good Friday. I should have nightmares on Good Friday. Yeah, I obviously didn't get my last statement out. I asked you if you'd stop interrupting me. Oh, I stopped. You're asking me if I stopped. 
No, I say, will you stop interrupting me? Oh, sure. Absolutely. Sorry. Okay, that's, that's how I ended it before my computer went dead, which I apologize for. Yeah, I, I'd like to be able to speak, but I don't feel like getting talked over. Thank you. Sure. Uh, Otto Warburg's uh, work has been misinterpreted by people who believe that sugar promotes cancer. Otto Warburg, what he determined was that this was due to a respiratory problem of the mitochondria. And because of damage to the mitochondria and the respiratory system of the cells, uh, they turn to anaerobic glycolysis as opposed to aerobic glycolysis. Well, that finding about Otto Warburg, which you can read about, and I certainly have many times, has been misinterpreted by the people who promote sugar, promotes cancer. It starts with that basic misinformation, always promoting Otto Warburg, yet they obviously don't understand his work. The other thing you have to do is you have to look around the world and you see where cancers are rare and where they're common. Where they're common, and this has been something that's been discovered since 1950, that people have been doing this type of, uh, of study of the, uh, the worldwide distribution of cancers, breast, colon, prostate. Uh, these cancers are, are cancers that are confined primarily to parts of the world where you eat the Western diet. Uh, parts of the world, like I mentioned, uh, and you should know this, uh, parts of the world, such as Japan, before they switched to the Western diet, they didn't have prostate cancer. And as you mentioned, prostate cancer is quite rare still in the Asians, but they're catching up as they're switching to the Western diet. It's the, the animal foods and the free oils. You know, you can take, you can look at all kinds of details. Uh, you can look at the uh, environmental poisons. I just told you how you get the environmental poisons. They come up through the food chain. Uh, yeah, they're a problem. Uh, fat promotes cancer uh, in experimental studies. Vegetable fat pro promotes cancer. But there are all kinds of things about the rich Western diet that cause people to be sick. Many components, and they probably don't work independently. They probably work together. And that's why I, I would encourage the listener to step back and not get involved in the details, but look at the big picture. When you eat a diet of rich foods, you end up fat and sick. When you eat a diet of starches based on corn and rice and potatoes, as people have for hundreds of thousands of years, they've lived on starch-based diets. Then they're trim, healthy, hardworking, they're warriors. And from that simple fact, you ought to be able to build everything else. Everything else ought to fit and be true. I find the scientific research, if I read the methods carefully, and of course I read who funded the study, I find the scientific research is consistent and clear. I find uh, the history is, is clear and consistent. I find people's religions, what they teach them about good diets and how people get sick is consistent and clear. I don't find any inconsistency and you shouldn't. The truth is simple and easy to understand. Don't make, don't, don't make it so complex that you don't know what to do. You need to eat a diet based on starch with the addition of fruits and vegetables, get a little sunshine, a little moderate exercise, and clean habits, of course. And that's basically it. Thank you for not interrupting. Sure. I uh, don't have much to add. I, um, I agree generally what's been said here. It's surprising to me that prostate uh, cancer is not, uh, if one does a PET scan where radioactive uh, labeled sugar is injected. Um, you, uh, cannot, you cannot find cancer in the prostate uh, during that, in that uh, PET scan. So that is the analogy that's typically used. It doesn't apply for prostate cancer. Very interesting. I was not aware of that. Thank yep. you. That's true. I appreciate that. Yep. But anyway, it's hard to believe someone with cancer uh, can't eat an apple or have some blueberries on their oatmeal. It really is. It's hard for me to believe that that poses a great threat uh, to their long distance of well-being there. Um, should they be drinking fruit juices and guzzling, you know, eating four pounds of grapes in front of the TV? No, they shouldn't. Should they be eating two pounds of dried apricot? No, they shouldn't. Uh, but uh, whole fruits in, in, in you know, moderation, small moderation, I think are absolutely acceptable. And, and I think uh, it doesn't make sense to, uh, uh, to eliminate the, all the good things, like Dr. Espinosa said, uh, that fruits can bring into the diet, including anti-cancer effects. So I think uh, moderate fruit consumption is fine, even if one has a neoplasm in the body. <laughs>